Good morning or afternoon or evening, depending on when you're joining us. Welcome back to Coffee and Kale. My name is Nicole, and today we have Dr. Joe Asamoa with us. We are going to talk about buy and hold strategies, and we'll get into all the details. So keep watching. Good morning. Morning. It's the time that we're recording this. Thank you Hi, for Nicole, joining you? me. I'm good. How are Thanks. you? I'm very well. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, of course. It's an honor, and I look forward to this discussion. Yeah, let's see. So, we are talking about um, buy and hold. That is primarily your part of the market. You've been in the real estate, finance, and landlord part of the business for over 30 years now. Is that yes. right? I, uh, I was born in Ghana. Okay. And when I was five years old, we moved to England. And I lived in England until 30 nine years ago when I came to the US okay. and um, and after a couple of years I bought my first house okay. in Washington DC Northwest DC in Columbia Heights for $49,000 in the DC market in Columbia Heights oh, wow. and when I bought it they told me I was getting ripped off okay I was paying too much okay. I was getting duped okay so uh, I said, uh, okay. I mean, there's a background to how I got into that one. Sure. Uh, the, the, the backstop is that uh, the boss I was working with at my job, he got fired uh, six weeks after I came to the US. And uh, so we connected a few weeks later mm -hmm. and for lunch, or mm -hmm. coffee it was. And this was the defining conversation. Okay. Uh, he said to me, Joe, this is America. This happens all the time because in Europe it never happens. Okay. <laughs> and you came to the US for this position yes. that your boss has yes. just been let go of. Exactly. Okay. And uh, he's the only person I knew. I knew nobody in the US. Oh, he just came. I had two suitcases oh, in my hand. America. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> two suitcases in my hand, hundred dollars in my pocket. That's oh my gosh. Uh, okay. right, uh, coming to America, they call it. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so uh, so he says to me, Joe, this happens all the time. Don't worry. It is what it is. Uh, my advice to you is that you may want to explore real estate. Okay. And this guy at this time had like 10 houses. Yeah. And I couldn't fathom how anybody yeah. could have more than one house. Sure. I mean, who does this? Yeah. And he says, yeah, uh, you may want to check this real estate stuff out. If you do, make sure that you um, start early. Okay. Make sure you buy as many as you can. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, make sure you keep them. Don't okay. sell them. Um, and uh, so that's his words of wisdom. And okay. uh, so after that conversation, I explored real estate okay. and I bought my first house uh, after two years in the US. It was a complete disaster. <laughs> uh, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. I don't well, know first, you, you know, it was your <laughs> first time. It was, it was a disaster. <laughs> really? Of the okay. <laughs> I mean, I could write a book on that one. <laughs> yeah. well, give us the highlights though, because people get into investing in the first time out and think it's like HGTV. So mm -hmm. what kinds of things went wrong on the first one? Well, I inherited some tenants. Okay. And that's number one. Uh, okay. I bought this house and uh, I, I bought this guru courses, you know, the ones, you yeah, know. Yeah, the box know. ones. Yeah, well, on yeah CD exactly. Or tape, yeah, uh -huh. tape, it tapes at that time. Uh, <laughs> you two could do this. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> We're not going to date ourselves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Hawaii in the background. Yeah. Right. All you got to do is give me your credit card. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All your problems will be solved. Yeah. Right. Anyway, I bought one of those things. Anyway, so I, I, uh, I bought one of those courses. It sounds so easy. Yeah. I went to this uh, real estate, um, RIA at that time, real estate investment club uh, okay. near Howard University. I met this guy who said, I've got a house to sell. No money okay. down. Uh, I said, no money down. No down. No, just like what it said to the guru. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, <laughs> you've heard this before. You've watched oh, wow. the tapes and now this guy in real life. Oh, wow, okay. it's true. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I said, uh, you know, so I went to the house and there were some tenants inside. Okay. I said, you know, uh, how the tenants? Oh man, they're great. Oh, fantastic. You know, I mean, I was straight from England, you know. Right. All yeah. Americans are honest. Of course. <laughs> so I took him his word, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I ended up buying the house and find out that uh, they had uh, a $5,000 water bill. Uh, they hadn't paid him for three months. Mm -hmm. And they were going to sell the house at a tax sale. So that was my entree to real wow. estate. Wow. And, and you were working full time at this time? I was working full time at the time. Okay. And I was doing travel. I was traveling. I uh, did a lot of travel around the country, fed around the world. Anyway, uh, without the details, uh, it was a horrible experience. It took uh, forever to turn it around. Okay. Uh, I did turn it around. Okay. And I mean, uh, I learned everything about what not to do. And so after that experience, uh, I kind of got over it and then bought another one. Okay. And then bought another one. I just kept on going uh, until uh, June the 6th, 
2003. Okay, so um, we're how many years in at this point? So that's about what, 15? Okay. Uh, well, yeah, about 15, yeah, 15, 16 years in. And uh, I had reached a milestone. I was, at that time I was working for a large technology company. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first letter begins with I, the second, the third letter begins with M. Okay, <laughs> you can fill in the blanks. Uh, I know you fill in the blanks. Yeah, sandwich between an I and an M. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Today's quiz. <laughs> I read the milestone whereby my income from my job mm -hmm. equaled my income from my rental property. Okay, and it took about 15 years to get there. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, I was just kind of stumbling along. Okay. Uh, I mean, knowing what I know now, I would have done that a lot faster. Um, mm. But I didn't know. So I didn't Meaning you would have put more intent on the real estate to grow it faster? Well, you know, when you don't know, know, when you don't have a mentor, when you don't, when you're kind of winging it, when you're kind of learning through the school of hard knocks, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you figure it out. Yeah. But if you, um, if I want to be a world's greatest mortgage broker, for example, mm -hmm. I can figure it out. Sure. Or I can hang out with you. I see. And then you'll tell me, look, based on experience, yeah. this is what you do, this is what you don't, don't do. Know. Don't do, don't, do this, you know, but do it a little bit differently. Exactly. Let me yeah. to this person mm -hmm. and so on. So you just get, if you, if you have mm -hmm. good guidance, good mentoring, good coaching, uh, you can get to where you need to go to a lot faster okay. than if you're trying to figure out. So that's the same kind of. Approach. Right. Uh, I figured it out, but looking back, if I knew what I knew now, what I knew then, sure. it would have been a lot faster. Okay. And so since then, uh, it's pretty essentially full time real estate investor. I, as I said, I buy houses, I hold on to houses. Okay. I flipped a few houses, but looking back, buying houses is the way to go, especially in markets like this, the Washington, D.C. area, yeah. where it's what we call an appreciated market. So uh, over time, it goes through cycles, but over the long haul, it tends to appreciate in value. Okay. So the, the, the reality in markets like this mm -hmm. is that it's always expensive. Yeah. I mean, it was expensive when I bought my first house. Yeah. It's too much. Yeah. You know, 10 years later, it's like 140,000, it's too much. Yeah. 10 years later, it's 350,000, it's too much. I have that conversation yeah. with buyers all the time. Well, what about if I wait for a little while? Well. You're gonna to have to spend more money. It is what it is. I mean, yeah. it's like that in Washington, the most capital cities in the world. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, having lived in London, I kind of saw that, understand that dynamic. So it's just a matter of how do you start. Okay. And uh, because that's the most intimidating part is, well, I don't have much money. I don't know anybody. You know, you know I don't have contractors. I, yeah. I don't have a mortgage broker, or I can't start. Sure. So you don't stop. That's a great um, segue into the first question, which is the Burr strategy. Would you suggest people start there? I know a lot of people start there. So for that first time investor or that person who owns their property, but are looking to get that first investment, what would you recommend they do? Where do they, how do they take that first step? Okay. I think the first step would be to buy your own home. <clears throat> That's Fair number enough. one. I didn't um, pay him for that as a mortgage loan officer. That's a genuine first step. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is because, uh, well, I'll add to that is to house what they call house hack, mm -hmm. uh, whereby, yeah, you know, with it rising interest rates, it's getting more expensive, in, mm -hmm. you know, and so if you can't drive down the cost of your housing, mm -hmm. it's very hard to save. Sure. Okay. And, uh, and, and therefore, yes, you should buy your first, um, property to live in because there are benefits in, you know, you get a low down payment, you got tax benefits and things like that, but you still got high housing costs. Right. So if you can drive that cost down by uh, renting part of that space out, mm -hmm. then instead of paying 3000 you're now paying 1200 1500 So that 1500 that you would save mm -hmm. uh, by having a roommate, you can now use that to save. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and therefore you can start building your, you know, your down payment. In fact, that's what happened in my second house I bought. Uh, I didn't, they didn't call it house hacking at that time. Yeah. Just, I, I just say, how, how can I yeah. not pay anything to this house? Yeah, wow, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. And so I specifically bought that house with the idea of renting part of that space. So when you were looking at that property, you were looking at it for like bedrooms on opposite sides of the, the floor plan or something so that it was more conducive to a roommate. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. It had an English basement, you know, that okay. could, you could have a separate entrance on the front. Okay. So I could rent, so I could rent the basement out. Okay. And uh, also had three bedrooms upstairs. Uh, I rented one room. I lived in one room and rented the other two out. Mm. So it was a very aggressive strategy. Okay. In fact, I was making money from that house. Okay. I had zero cost. 
And this is while you had a full time job and were. No, I was traveling around, a uh, full time okay. job. Okay. And, okay. Uh, and so on. So, so to answer your question, mm -hmm. uh, somebody starting, uh, I would suggest that they, they've got to drive their housing costs down. Otherwise, they can't get out of get, uh, the gate. Uh, because for most people, the housing cost is, is by far the biggest expense that they right. have. And so if you can't save, because, I mean, you're a mortgage broker, so mm -hmm. most lenders will not give you 100%. That's right. They're going to expect you to bring something to the table. That's right. And so you're going to need to have some savings. Yeah. Okay. And if your housing cost is eating all your income, you, you, know, you, you can't save anything. And uh, unless you get some wealthy parents or somebody who gives you some money, so, right. which doesn't really work. Well, right. I don't know anybody like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm in, I'm one of those people and looking for like a new niece or something. Yeah, yeah. right, right. So, so that's number one is to okay. drive your housing costs down by renting some space out. Okay. So if you can do that, then you can start saving some money. Uh, and then you go to your uh, rental strategy, which you, or I, I call it the buy and hold strategy or the birth okay. strategy. Uh, because the reality is that you can't, if you want to build wealth, which is, you know, have a positive uh, financial statement, let's say, where your assets are greater than your liability, for most people, it's going to come through real estate. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can save some money in the stock market and things like that, but uh, real estate has been time tested, mm -hmm. especially in this market, the DC mm -hmm. market. So it is what it is. And uh, and therefore, if you want to build wealth, then you're going to have to start owning some assets. Okay. Okay. And uh, real estate is a hard asset, and therefore, it's now a matter of what real estate do you buy. Okay. Okay. And where do you buy? It, okay. And how much do you want to pay for it, and all that kind of stuff. So you've got to develop some kind of criteria, and uh, and so on. So you start where you are. Okay. If if I want to. I mean, I'd like to drive a Rolls Royce, but if all I can afford is a Chevy. Me too. Then you drive a Chevy right. okay? until, uh, you, until you get to that point. Right. 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 I mean, you know, so if you can't afford yeah. neighborhood A, then you maybe start in neighborhood C okay. or D. Uh, you can put a start. Okay, start you start somewhere based on the reality of where you are. Okay. Uh, you otherwise you're gonna be oh, well, I'll wait and wait and wait until I get to, I can afford to live in Georgetown. Right. And then you'll be waiting. Forever. And then the prices will have appreciated, the price and, and right. now you need and, and, more. It's a, it's a harder, a taller hill to climb. Exactly. More down payment, exactly. the price is higher, the interest rates will be doing what they do, which is fluctuate. Yeah, so it's it's important to start. Okay. And uh, you start where you are, yeah. uh, given the realities of your situation. Yeah. You know, so that's... And I want to add to the roommate piece of it, from a mortgage perspective, we can use roommate income towards qualification. Exactly. Um, so start where you are and talk to somebody because there are several ways to kind of skin that cat or peel the onion i guess is a better way to say that yeah. um okay so you got your first you got to a place where you were roughly 15 years in and now you have to make a decision i'm assuming stay at the job or do real estate full-time or what happened at year 15. well i mean i had options okay you know i mean that's um, that's the that's the goal i i wasn't it wasn't realistic of me to quit my job after I bought my second house. Sure. You know, I mean, uh, the first house I bought, going back to that one, mm -hmm. I had a tenant from hell. It was a horrible experience. Yeah. And I was making $50 in cash flow. Mm. $50. Okay. okay. After all this said and done, I was netting $50. Okay. Anybody, if I have posed that question to anybody, you, mm -hmm. would you buy a house whereby you're going to get tenants from hell and they're going to give you nightmares and you're going to make 50 bucks? I just advised someone against it this past week, and it was two hundred dollars a month exactly. that he would have been netting. So uh -huh. most people say no way, okay. But uh, I listened to that the wise words from the mm. uh, you know my ex boss. Whatever you do, don't sell it. Mm. Okay. So that house now is what seven hundred fifty thousand. Forty nine thousand. Okay. Is that forty nine forty seven? I forgot what this is. Sure. So uh, what's it called? It's about seven hundred fifty thousand. Right. The rent is four thousand seven hundred. There's no mortgage. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've got a home equity line on that house, which would allow me to buy more houses, and so on. Okay. So what does that say? Mm -hmm. What it says is that if you take a long term view, mm -hmm. and if you take a short term view, it doesn't make any sense. Fifty bucks, you know, right. you know. But if right. you look on the long term, then you know mm -hmm. you can start. You know, say, okay, 
yes, if I if I if I can get good tenants mm -hmm. and survive that delta period between now and then, it's probably going to work out okay. Uh, you ask anybody, anybody in the D.C. area, anybody, I don't care who it is, who's owned a house for more yeah. than 10 years, if they know now what they, if they knew then what they know now, what would they have done 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. Most people have said, I wish I bought more. Mm -hmm. Always want more. I'm one of those people, yeah. You know, so it is what it is. And, and, and that's the point, is that if you take a long-term view, it usually plays itself out. Uh, but obviously you've got to be able to survive. You can't survive with tenants from hell for 10 years. Right. It'll drive you have crazy. to do something. You've got to be able to, I mean, which goes to the other part of this equation, which is uh, you've got to be able to find good tenants and keep them. Okay. Uh, and manage that relationship. Otherwise, you can't survive 10 years. Okay. So before we move on to the tenant <laughs> selection piece of it, you said you took a HELOC out on, or have subsequently taken a HELOC out on that property. So mm -hmm. instead of refinancing, or would that fall into the refinance part of the Burr strategy? So Burr again is buy, renovate, Reno please. <laughs> buy, so you gotta buy it. Yeah. Then you gotta renovate it. Got because it. Because typically what you do, uh, the reality is that as investors, uh, you don't wanna pay retail prices. And the market is so competitive is that if the house is in good condition, mm -hmm. you'll compete with homeowners, okay? So homeowners will always pay more than you as an investor, okay? Because all they want is just move in, turn the key, and they're done, right. okay? They don't want to deal with having to rip out walls and get a new Fair kitchen, enough. bathroom. They don't want to deal with right. that. They just want to move into the house and call it a day. So the only way you can get a discount, i.e. have equity on day one, okay, okay is to buy at a, at a, at a, at a, at a discount. And usually you can only get as a discount if two scenarios. Yeah. One is there's something wrong with the house or there's something wrong with the seller, mm. their situation. So okay? there's some disadvantage to the property. There's, there's something going on which is causing the seller to sell fast and therefore mm -hmm. take a discount. Or there's something wrong with the house which is intimidating uh, most homeowners. Got it. They walk in okay. and say, oh, right. yeah. <laughs> so they away. There's mold, there's termites, <laughs> right. there's, exactly. something. there's something going okay. on where it, it frightens them. Okay. And that's where the opportunity is. Okay. So therefore, you you know, typically, if mm. you want to get a discount, you're going to have to transform. You're going to do some work on that house. Mm. You're going to have to address some of the issues that's wrong with the house. Mm. Okay. So it requires some form of renovation. Okay. Okay. So that's the second part. Buy, Buy renovate. renovate. So you renovate it from its current condition okay. to its future condition. Okay. You are forcing equity. Okay. okay, you're forcing appreciating. Okay? okay, so you spend a dollar on the renovation, but it, it gets you two dollars back in appreciation. Okay, so that means spend the dollars in kitchens and bathrooms or wherever you get the money back, not on heated floors and I don't right. know. Whatever. Yeah. Wood. So renovate <laughs> it to a standard where you can get money back, but not to a standard where it might make like HGTV dream homes or something. Well, I mean, it's the law of diminishing returns. Okay. Okay, so. Um, if you got a house in Brooklyn, we're in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, I buy this house and uh, I spend a hundred thousand dollars on renovation, okay, and it'll go from this to this. Mm -hmm. If I spend a million dollars on the renovation, mm -hmm. the bottom line is I'm in Brooklyn, so mm -hmm. you, it, it won't go up by another million dollars sure. because I spend a million dollars. It's a re diminishing okay. returns, okay? okay. So you spend the renovations to a certain point, whereby you can maximize the return. Okay. Because if you spend more, you're not going to get any more. You're eating into your profit. Exactly. Okay. So it's that diminishing. Okay. So you got to figure that part out. Okay. And uh, once you do it, but I do a lot of what I call Section 8. Section 8 okay. rentals, a great program. I know it's got a lot of baggage associated with okay. it. It's, a great, it's the greatest thing since okay. sliced bread. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> and is that our second R, buy, renovate, rent? Yes. Then okay. You, okay. So you, you renovate it into the, uh, to the condition whereby you can rent it. Got it. Okay. And there are strategies associated with renovation. You gotta deal with contracts as well, you gotta deal with permits, you gotta I mean, a whole bunch of stuff yeah. associated with that, which is very intimidating for most people. Yeah. And then once you've done the renovations, you then go to the the third the th third, third the letter, third second R. R. <laughs> yeah, second R. Yeah, uh -huh. second R, okay. Which is to rent it. Okay. So you gotta find some tenants who's gonna bring you income so you can pay the expenses. 
Okay, so you gotta find tenants, you gotta screen tenants, you gotta move them in, you gotta manage that relationship, okay. and then uh, for the long haul. And here's where you found the sweet spot in the Section Eight renters. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I, okay. that's that's the key. Okay. Um, you know, and because the goal is to survive the Delta, mm -hmm. because we want the benefits of real estate. Mm -hmm. We want the benefits of buying this house at forty nine thousand, and twenty years, thirty years later, it's worth seven hundred fifty thousand. Okay, but we have to be able to survive yeah. uh, during that delta and uh, and so on. So that's where the whole rental thing comes in. That's where the whole uh, landlording comes in. That's the whole the, the 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 make or break is your ability to find quality tenants. So it's almost R sub S like survival renting with survival <laughs> included. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sanity. <laughs> <laughs> or sanity. I like that one. Uh, uh, yeah, so okay. it, it's, it's surviving that Delta period. Okay. And uh, what I do, uh, as I said, I mean, again, we I, I could talk about each of these things yeah, in much detail, course. but at, at a high level, uh, most of your problem as a landlord, uh, I would say 80% of your problem is because you got the wrong person in your house. Mm -hmm. Okay, you just got the yeah. wrong person in your house. Yeah. Okay, and which means that you didn't scream. Yeah. Okay, uh, so you've got to have a strategy for screening uh, to weed out uh, the good from the bad from the other and, and there's a whole approach to that which you know I can talk about another time and I would uh, like for you to talk about that because I thought I had a section 8 tenant in a property and I thought I was doing a great job of screening we can talk about it another time but I ended up with the tenant from AT double hockey sticks and it took a little bit to get her out but I was so I was patting myself on the back. I did a great job screening, and then they didn't pay for a year and all kinds of other things. But to your point, you have to spend some time in it. Yeah, you got to spend some really, time. Yeah. But that just gets you in. That just gets them into the house. Yeah. Uh, once they're in the house, you have to manage that relationship. Okay. Uh, and th there's a certain type of tenant that I'm looking for. I call them tier one. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Nordstrom of the voucher. Okay. Office. Okay. <laughs> Let's hear about the tier one tenant, okay? So, it's all sizes, though. <laughs> I like it. Uh, the tier one tenant, we're all looking for the same thing, I think, which is a tenant that pays you. <laughs> yes, yes, preferably. <laughs> that's the uh, best survival. We need somebody to pay us, okay? Tenant that's going to take care of the property. Okay. Tenant that's pleasant to deal with. Sure. And tenant that's going to stay a long time. Okay, because if you don't, the, the, the other part of that, stay a long time is key. Because if you don't do that, you're going to have what we call a turnover. And whenever there's a turnover, it's very, very expensive. Okay. It's, you've got to paint the place again, you've got to clean it again, there's no income coming sure. through. It's, it, it'll wipe out maybe two to three months of lost income. Okay. Uh, so if you can't manage that turnover, you really make no cash flow. So, um, and so I zeroed in on that. Because most of, there's two parts to this thing. There's, to, make, to make a profit, uh, you either focus on the income side mm -hmm. or the expense side. Okay. Okay. Most investors focus on the income side. Hey, how can I increase the rent by $100, $200, okay. blah, 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 blah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is okay. But the expense side, which is the turnover part, mm -hmm. uh, is by far the most expensive. Okay. If the rent is, let's say, 3000 bucks, okay, mm -hmm. every time somebody leaves, you've got at least one month, probably two months of lost income after okay. all is said and done. Okay, mm -hmm. you've got no income coming in, you've got to paint the place again, you've got to clean it right. again, you've got to da, 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 what's your right. time and so on. So it's about two months. So that vacancy has cost you $6,000. Right. You're worried about a $100 rent increase. Mm. Okay, when if you can't control the expense side, $6,000. Right, so the bottom. intention, yeah, so, to preserve that income is probably more than the tension is is more valuable than a yeah. tension spent on spent on getting a little bit more out there. yeah so it, it you know once i figure that out i mean okay. it's a aha moment uh i so, said okay sorry go ahead this is what i need to do i need to make sure that i can minimize turnover mm -hmm. how do i get people in my house mm -hmm. who stay for a long time okay my longest tenant is 26 years Wow. Uh, I regularly get 18-year tenants, 15-year tenants, 19-year tenants. Well, so over 26 years, though, if they started a rent of $1,000 a month, inflate, you do increase rent, but are you also like, 
addressing maintenance issues? How do you keep both keep them in there so you minimize turnover and capitalize on just general appreciation of, of or well, increase in rental prices? It's a, it's an appreciation play. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm not. It's not a cash flow play initially. Ah, I see. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. buying this asset and holding it with the assumption that in five, 10, 15 years time, it's going to be worth more than what it is today. Uh, okay. I just want to be able to survive during that time. I okay. See. So it's an appreciation play as opposed to a cash flow play initially. It's a cash flow play after a long time. Uh, but initially, that's what I'm saying. The $50, you won't buy it. If it's a pure cash flow play, you're not going to buy it. Okay, but as an appreciation play, it may be okay. I might need to revise the guidance I gave you that gentleman yesterday. $200 a month. I'll send him this episode. <laughs> but yeah, so it's an appreciation play. I see. It's not a cash flow play. I mean, nobody knows what's going to happen in this market 510. We don't know. All we can go by is history. Mm-hmm. And history tells us there has never been a seven year period in, in DC ever where prices have gone down. Never. So history tells us. Therefore, we need to hold on to these assets because history tells us it's going to increase in value over the long haul. Yeah, and, and that's what it, it is. So, uh, so little, little secrets I, I'll share with you. Every, you know, how to keep tenants a long time. Yeah. Cause it's not just an accident. I mean, yeah. you know, people don't stay 20 years, 18 years, yeah. 25 years because I cross my fingers. Right. There's you an know, intent there. There's, I, a, there's a strategy. Okay. You know, there's a game plan, you know, yeah. and, uh, it's a calculated game plan. Every mother's day, all my tenants get bouquets of flowers, yeah. every Christmas present, every Christmas they get Christmas presents. Uh, if the kids uh, get A's at school, I give them fifty dollars. Really? Uh, we have a timeshare at Mass None. All my uh-huh. tenants get free vacation. Every year yeah, or every period? Year. Really? If they want it, they can go free vacation. All my tenants. Because it's a pre an appreciation play, you want to keep them happy keep and happy. there, and paying rent. Yes, and but to <laughs> and for them to deal with. <laughs> But it's a long-term, this is a long-term relationship. This isn't it's a, it's, a... It's not a transaction, it's a relationship. And these are customers, these aren't tenants. Uh, any business, business 101, is cheaper to keep an existing customer happy than it is to go find another one. That's business 101. It's also the lyric of a song, it's cheaper to keep her, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll leave that part out. Yeah, I'll leave that part out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be happy to. Uh, you said that, <laughs> We're renting for the long term. So buy, renovate, rent. What's the next one? Refinance. Refinance or HELOC. Yeah. So what's um, the difference in yeah, which do you prefer? Right, so uh, initially it's a refi. Okay. Because in order to buy, renovate, you you get on we take what we call short term financing. Uh, it may be for a commercial bank, it may be through hard money lenders. It's, it's, you know, it's short term money. Okay. You are forcing the appreciation on that asset and then you want to refinance based on the higher value. Okay. And then you can now borrow more money because it's increasing value and they can pay off the short term yeah. and then replace that with long term permanent financing. Okay. Um, you know, so that's where the refi now. The HELOC, so you now have got permanent financing in, in mm-hmm. place. Uh, you may have a loan to value of 70, 75 percent, 80 percent. Okay, so there's not enough there to do a HELOC, right? Okay, uh, you just got one loan for uh, 75 percent mm-hmm. over time. The value is going to go up, okay, where there's equity now in the house, and therefore you can now uh, borrow against that equity right. through a HELOC. Okay. Um, yeah. you know, and so, on. so that's essentially what would happen. That's what I've done several of my houses over time, 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 time. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, there's equity. Mm-hmm. What do you do with that equity? If you're on the growth path of your, you know, of your uh, investing, then you want to acquire more properties, mm-hmm. and uh, and so you can tap into that equity through a home equity line, uh, credit, or other second uh, mm-hmm. fee, you know, loan. And then take that money and then make it work. So that asset now, that one asset is now working. It's working. Mm. That equity is just not sitting there dead. It's, it's, it's building your portfolio. And so that one house now can buy another one. 
Like buy another one. Like buy another in the one. growth strategy. The growth and strategy, then yeah. if you have more than one house, you have more than one. You can accelerate. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I didn't, if I, let's say going back to, if I knew then what I know now, sure. uh, these are some of the things which, uh, you know, would have fast tracked me, mm. uh, you know, and so on. So there's, there's a, there's, there's a, uh, there's a, there's a, there's a game plan. There can be a game plan. Uh, it works. It, it works. I mean, you know, uh, it's based on a very simple premise. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's that, you know, in real estate, mm -hmm. what I found is that you want time, time to do the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. Let time do the heavy lifting. Not you, let time. Okay? Buy something. Hold on to it. Let time take care of it. Because you can buy something. I mean, yeah, I'll tell you a story. I mean, I'll tell you a story. Yeah. Okay, so in the mid-90s, I don't know if you were here in D.C. in, in the mid-90s. No, I didn't get here till 03. Okay, so in the mid-90s, D.C. was going downhill. Yeah. This is when Marion Barry got busted. Mm -hmm. You had the control world takeover yeah. and so on. Anyway, um, I could have bought a house up in Logan Circle. Okay. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Okay. The seller won $126,000. There's a four level, one of those big old four. Yeah. Yeah. She won $126,000. Yeah. And I offered her 120. Okay. So we were haggling over $6,000. 6, yeah. And I said, no deal. Can you believe that? No. <laughs> no deal. Those homes are beautiful. $6,000. Logan Circle in the 90s was probably a lot, not probably, I'm sure it was a lot less desirable than it is now. But the point is, it's not worth about two million bucks. Yeah. Okay, the point is, is that it was. I thought it was too expensive. Sure. Okay, and so uh, I didn't buy it. Today, people are saying it's too expensive, so they're not going to mm. buy. It. Okay, and uh, the numbers don't make any sense. I'm going to get fifty dollars cash flow. Mm. I'm going to get two hundred dollars. Doesn't make any sense. I'm not buying it. I'm going to wait till the stars align when yeah. I start buying again. It, it never aligns. Uh, so you just have to buy it and let time do the heavy lifting because time will do the heavy lifting uh, in appreciating markets. It's been proven. Now, any thoughts on non appreciated or maybe flat markets? So in DC, it's kind of hard to find any period of time. You mentioned earlier there's no historic period of time over seven years where the values have gone down. What about flat markets or places like maybe? Baltimore, a little bit further outside of the Beltway, sure. where we don't have the appreciation we have in DC. Sure. What would you recommend? In those sure. I mean, there's two cash flow. There's, there's two. There's two plays. So just flip to that. There, there's a cash flow play, okay. and there's an appreciation play. Got it. Okay. So in flat markets, like you say, it's more of a cash flow play. Got it. Okay. okay. You're buying at a low price, Got it. and your rent proportional to your debt mm. is quite is different. So you can get some cash flow. That's right. Okay. But you may not get the appreciation. That's right. In this market, the Washington DC market. It's more of an appreciation play. You may not get the cash flow. Yeah. And now you can get the cash flow through Section 8. Uh, but uh, what's it called? Uh, but generally, it's an appreciation play here. Okay. So you may not get the cash flow, but over time, you'll I get see. the appreciation. And in my opinion, looking, you know, after all is said and done, yeah. appreciation trumps cash flow. Okay. Because time is on your side. Because time is on your side. Yeah. If you let time do the heavy lifting, uh, you'll make more money uh, buying something for 50000 which is now 500000 I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example if you want. Yes, you know. please. Okay, so um, I, I bought a house in Washington, D.C. for 100000 Okay. I bought another house in Maryland for 100000 at the same time. Okay. Okay. And uh, I rented both. Okay, so you're doing the same effort in terms mm -hmm. of renting and so on. So you fast forward uh, extra number of years. The house in Maryland is worth, let's say, 400000 Okay. And the house in D.C. is worth nearly 800000 Yeah. Okay. The rent in, D in Maryland is like 2500 Okay. And the rent in D.C. is 5400 uh, Okay. Okay. The same asset. Okay. Oh, not same asset, but the same, nice. sort of same, 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 uh, what's it called, uh, monies, right. when you, acquisition time. Right. Okay. So what happened when I looked, you know, 
I looked at the portfolio, because I have quite a few properties, so I looked at the portfolio. Mm-hmm. I said, aha, uh-huh, there's a, you know, if you're going to go through all this work, mm-hmm. okay, if you're going to be dealing with tenants and all this kind of stuff, then you want to pay that at the end of the day, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, and in my opinion, you know, the payday is the appreciation. And not all, not all areas appreciate the same. They don't. So just buying a house in itself is not enough. Mm-hmm. It's where you buy it. Right. Uh, so you know your market going so in. So you got to know. Uh, so there's a lot to this thing. It's not yeah. just as simple as, oh, let me just go buy a house. Right. Um, you know, if, if it's a game plan. Again, this is what I've learned. Sure. I didn't know this when I first yeah. started. So I would just buy anything anyway, you yeah. know, and, and so on. But, you know, you can yeah. take a very strategic approach where you can get to where you need to go to a lot faster than just winging it. And, uh, and, and that's just experience. I see. And, uh, but yeah, I, you cannot cash flow. You can't, you can't quit your job mm-hmm. with $100 in cash flow, $200. It's not, it's not going to happen. So you have to have another source of income. In my case, I had a job. Right. So I wasn't dependent on the real estate to support me. Right. Okay. So I was able to be okay with hundred dollars, fifty dollars, three hundred dollars here and there. Mm-hmm. I was okay with that because mm-hmm. my main income stream was through my job. Right. Okay. Now if I didn't have that job, then I maybe couldn't do the strategy I've just talked about because sure. I need to eat. Yeah. You know, so I may have to go to Baltimore. Because, yeah. you know, in those places. Well, but and that's how you can adjust it. Go somewhere else. You go or somewhere look else, Or yeah. cash for flow play or... So I'm hearing a lot of mentorship moments here to go back to the initial question. What would you do differently? Or what do you what do you need to know after your first purchase? It sounds like you need to know your market. You need to understand... If you were to mentor yourself as a younger person, mm-hmm. know your market, understand the cash flow versus appreciation play, um, Find some way to keep the lights on, <laughs> starting out, rent it with a roommate, those kinds of things. Yeah, those are good takeaways. Yeah, I mean, you work on yourself uh, first, because we all have strengths and weaknesses. Sure. Uh, I have strengths, I have weaknesses, I have things like I enjoy doing, things I don't enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. There are other people out there who are good at what I'm not good at, and, uh, and so on. So I think it's sort of work on yourself first. You know, know what you're good at, what you're not good at, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what what your game plan is going to be, and so on. Uh, then I think it's going to be pick a niche. Mm. You know, because there's lots of different real estate strategies. Okay. You know, there's buy and hold, there's the fix and flip, there's okay. wholesaling, there's bird dogging, there's a whole you know, there's a whole bunch of different yeah. things. Okay, there's lots of different niches, and there are pros and cons with each one. So I think you have to pick one. Okay. Otherwise, you'll be running all over the yeah. place, you know, and today's is this. Shiny yeah, right. Yeah, you know, syndrome, next yeah. week, I'm doing Amazon. You know, next yeah. week, I'm doing, you know, eBay. Yeah. And doing, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. whatever. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you'll be running around, you yeah. know. <laughs> and, uh, so you pick a niche, okay. okay? Then you learn the basics okay. of that niche, um, you know, whatever that is. You don't need to know everything. You just learn the basics enough to know to get you going. But then it goes to the next part, which is to find successful people mm. who are doing what it is that you're doing, the niche that you're in. Mm. There's people out here who are successfully implementing what it is that you want to do. They're, they're out here. And, uh, and so why recreate the wheel? Mm-hmm. You don't need to. Especially in real estate. It's been around for it's so long. So long. And, there's and people it's out here. It's a proven way. It's a proven way. It's, there there are people well. out here. Now, there's a lot of people who talk about it. Sure, that's no, the hard part. No, there's <laughs> who's a difference. talking yeah. versus who actually has information and exactly. is doing. Yeah, yeah, there's a difference between people who are doing it and people who are successfully doing it. Okay. That's two different things. Okay. And uh, so what you want to do is to find people who are successfully doing it. Okay. Any suggestions on where those people hang? Are their watering holes are? Do they bowl on Thursday nights? Like what, what are we talking well, about? Well they're out there. I mean it's networking, you go to yeah. places, you you know, you speak to people, when you go to an event, you you know, you find they're they you know, you speak to hey, you know, who are the players here? You know, I, I mean they'll t- yeah, you need to speak to that person. You need sure. to speak to that person or whatever yeah. it is okay. because you know, they're good. Okay. And uh, usually if there's a, a group, the host of that group, whoever that group is. Uh, they know who's there, oh, no. okay. you know, okay. who the, who the movers and who's the, you know, yeah. non-movers and they can usually introduce you to that, that, that person. Okay. So, uh, it's, you know, it's to find that those people who are successful doing what it is that you want to do. Okay. 
because they will tell you what to do, what not to mm. do, uh, because they made the mistakes. If I want to be, as I said before, I'll give that example, if I want to be mm. the world's greatest you know, mortgage broker, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I can figure it out, but why? Right. You know, there are people who uh, have gone before me, <laughs> go meet them, shake their hand, buy them a cup of coffee. It's, it's, exactly. You yeah. know, you've got to incentivize them for them to help you. Because sure. they're, they're busy. They're, they're, you know, they're not going to be, you know, yeah. you know you've, got to, you've got to create some kind of win-win yeah. uh, where it's in their interest to help you. And that's up to you to figure that out. Right. Uh, but there are people out here who will help you, who, who can help you. And they're more than help, well, well, you know, willing to help you. But you've got to make it, you, now you have to figure out how... Mm-hmm. Do you make it worth their while? Sure. It's not always financial. Uh, you got to make it worth their while for them to help you. And uh, and then once you've got that, then you take action. Okay. I mean, that's the end of the day. You got to take action. You got to do something. You got to pull the trigger. You can't uh, be one of those people that's just otherwise, talking. Otherwise, you become one of the folks that are just talking about doing. Yeah, I just wait for the stocks to align. Yeah. Buy the next deal. I just wait for interest yeah. rates to go down. I yeah. wait for the prices to come down and I'll buy something. Right. And then you have that conversation a year, two years from now. It's not done anything. And it's, yeah. 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 Okay. So that's, that's, that's in a nutshell yeah. what it's all about. Okay. So to wrap up our time here today, finally, the last R is repeat. And it sounds like you repeat in the niche that you find, right? And you start it all over. Yeah. When you, um, when you refinance, you mm-hmm. can usually pull most of your money back out. Mm-hmm. And then right. you can use that money to then repeat. Got recycle, it. recycle, okay. do it again, do it again, do it again. So you, that's why you, that's how you make a limited amount of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, recycle, yeah, and therefore you can start building a portfolio. I had a manager who used to use the term rinse and repeat all the time, and I hated it, but it makes so much sense now. Yes, it <laughs> that is. is crazy as a young it professional, right, right, crazy. Right, but it, right. it makes a lot of sense. Um, but that's that's the gist of it. I mean, yeah, um, yeah it, 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 it's, it works. Yeah. I mean, that's all I can say. It's proven. It's proven. It's, it's, yeah. There's no hocus pocus. Uh, yeah. It is what it is. Uh, and what I'm sharing with, um, you know, with the audience is uh, my experience uh, during that 35, 37 years of doing this stuff. And, and um, thank you. Yeah, we just we just touched the we surface. We barely. You know, yeah, this is like the foam on top of the coffee. We, we got deep. <laughs> Well, we will have to do that in the future. We're more than happy to do so. Yeah. And uh, and so on. So the name of this podcast is Coffee and Kale. That's because those are the two things that keep me going. Coffee in the morning, definitely in the morning. And kale at some point during the day. If I had to ask you, the couple things that keep you going, keep you charging up that hill, what are they? Couple, handful, one or two. What keeps you putting one foot in front of the other every day? There's a couple of things. One, I I really... I know... I enjoy, I love what I do. Yeah. I love being a landlord. You can tell. <laughs> how, how about that? How do you, <laughs> can you imagine you can that? So, someone say, I love being a landlord. Yeah. Like a landlord. <laughs> well, because you figured out a way to make it work. I figured out, well, I'll say figured out, but I mean, I, it's evolved. It, okay. it, it, I mean, I didn't wake up one day and say, ha ha. Uh, you know, it's, okay. it's, a, it's a series of trials and tribulations, okay. uh, lessons learned, you know, and so on. But I really do enjoy, uh, most of my tenants are voucher holders. Okay. And, uh, the, you know, uh, I mean, despite the stereotype of voucher holders, mm-hmm. uh, most of the, a lot of families, I don't say most, a lot of the families there are no different than you and I. Mm-hmm. They want the same thing. Right. They want a decent place for their children. They want to be in a decent area. They don't want to be shot at. They don't want to be mm-hmm. rented from a slumlord. They're, right. you know, they've been there, done that. They're tired of that. Right. They want something else. Okay. okay. And, uh, mm-hmm. but they're just not given opportunities. You know, I mean, gentrification is, is a, you know, is, is a big deal uh, in Washington, D.C. area. You know, it's displacement for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And these folks have been displaced mm-hmm. and out of the neighborhoods and, uh, and so on. So what I enjoy is giving them an opportunity to stay in the neighborhood uh, through gentrification. So they get, they are mm-hmm. a beneficiary okay. of good schools, uh, you know, development. You know, rather than being pushed out, they they say, I mean, I'll give you an example. I mean, one of my tenants, because, uh, not too long ago, because she lived in that area where my house was, two of her kids have got full rides to the college. Because of where she lived? Because where she lived. You don't know the, what location means to the trajectory of someone, of somebody. Um, you know, she just said, huh. there's no way huh. this would have happened if we lived where we were before. Uh, just by being in a better environment, better neighborhoods, uh, better neighbors, better school, better friends, yeah. this is what's happened. Okay? 
uh, you can make a huge impact in yeah. people's lives. You can really make a difference yeah. in people's lives. And that's what I enjoy. You know, you know, just by the fact that I can say, you know, yeah, I'm making money, but I'm also making a huge difference in people's lives. I've yeah. never heard people say you'd be the beneficiary of gentrification. That's... Yeah, they're beneficiary. Yeah. Normally, they're a casualty. Exactly. You know, they're a casualty of gentrification. Now, they're a beneficiary. Wow. But they only a beneficiary because I own that house and I'm renting to them. Mm -hmm. If I didn't rent to them, they would be a casualty. True, but you're also creating an environment where they want to stay. Exactly. Like yearly vacations and Mother's Day bouquets. And, 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 that, and that's you know, and that's the point is that yeah. you know, hmm. it's a win-win. They pick the jackpot. They know they pick the jackpot. Yeah. It's in their interest to stay. Yeah. And what I've done in a roundabout way is created a firewall between them and you. Because ah. you're a good landlord. Yeah. You're trying to get these people. Yeah. Okay. And you're trying to poach them from me. Absolutely. Everyone's trying to poach these, good, <laughs> these tier one tenants. Okay? Right, right. But I, the relationship uh, that I have with them is preventing them. You don't stand a chance. Mm, you follow me? I do. Uh, and so, again, that's how you get the 5, 10, 15, 20. It's all about relationships. It's all about you know, treating them as customers, treating them as human beings. Uh, understanding what their needs are, understanding the, 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 you know, the family. You know, who are these people? What do they want? What do they don't want? Where do they want to live? Where do they don't want to live? Who do they want to rent from? Who do they don't want? I mean, there, there's a whole science That's stuff. revolutionary. And, uh, One of your degrees is psychology? Like, this is... No, I have an engineering, electrical engineering okay. degree. Uh, I, I did an MBA. Yeah. I did a PhD as well, uh, information systems. Uh, but the MBA is what changed all this, because in the MBA is business. You know, so uh, so business is it's all about customers, yeah. revenue, income. I mean, it's uh, yeah. you know segmentation, market segmentation. It's all about that. You know, yeah. not all Section Eight voucher holders are the same. Right. You can break that down into right. Tier One, Tier Two, Tier Three. Right. You know, there's a difference between each of these people. I just said, if I'm going to do this, I want Tier One tenants. Mm -hmm. Tier One. Taking the time to, figure, taking out the time to figure out who these that. people are, what they want, what they don't want, and I, I'm implementing that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your time with us this morning. No problem. And your I hope experience. this was helpful. <laughs> yes. Thank you guys for joining us. And as always, please comment, like, and subscribe. I appreciate your time this morning. No and we will see you next time on yeah. Talking Your Kids. Go ahead and reach me on the, what's it called? The yes. How Social. do how does the audience get in touch with you? I will pay, make sure it's in the description box below. Okay. You want your channel or what would you like? Yeah, uh, what's it called? Uh, I'm on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, at uh, Dr. Joe Asimo, that's Dr. Joe Asimo, and uh, also on Facebook. I do a Wealth Wednesday every Wednesday live stream, um, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time on Wednesday. So I talk about real estate and what I do. Uh, it's it's great, I think. It is. And uh, also, uh, you know, I'm trying to encourage more people to replicate what I do. Uh, the pie is big enough, as far as I'm concerned. It's, it doesn't matter if I tell everybody what I do. It's not like they're going to fire the whole to Washington. It's okay. Uh, you know, the pie is big enough, come on in. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm trying to encourage more people. Uh, and there's nothing more heartbreaking. Uh, I have this one house, let's say. Mm -hmm. I rented to, I mean, I mean, last, last one I did, I had 10 applications on that house. Okay. So obviously the family that got the house, they were ecstatic. Yeah. But I had to tell nine other people. They didn't get it. They didn't, you're right. It will be nice if I could say, well, I'm sorry, but... Call oh, Nicole. so you're creating a network where you can serve more people. Exactly. I can say, hey, I don't have one, but Nicole has something. Go and call her. And, uh, yeah. and so, so I'm trying to encourage yeah. more people to replicate what I do okay. such that, you know, we can make a difference in more people's lives. There we go. That's the one foot in front of the other. <laughs> thank you. Again, thank you very much. All of his contact information will be in the description box below. See you next time. Bye-bye.